Kazan University has improved its position in QS World University Rankings, one of the leading global rankings in education. Our university is now in 322nd position, which is 25 points above previous year. QS includes 51 subject rankings and 5 subject areas. Hi, this is Kazan University. Today we are talking about why Kazan may be the best place to study, live or visit in our program. However, Kazan with its diverse architecture, mixture of cultures, loyalty to national traditions. Welcome. How does Kazan greet its guests? Now they need only to use their phone device in order to sign the applications. The admission season is in full swing. What are these year's changes in the admission procedure? The student club uh, unites more than 7,000 university students. One big family. What are some activities for Kazan University students beyond studies? Kazan won in five nominations in international competition of most livable cities. It was announced during the latest meeting of International Assembly of Capital Cities and Large Cities of the Commonwealth of Independent States. The important thing is that Kazan is not just a place where you can spend a couple of days. People now come here for a prolonged period of time to rest or to work. And many just stay here for good. Kazan is traditionally among the Russian cities which are the most attractive for domestic or overseas visitors. Many of them are students. There are currently 170,000 students in Kazan. And some of them are guests from abroad. Kazan is a welcoming place for people of various backgrounds. What does Kazan look like in the eyes of international tourists and what's so attractive in the city? Sofia Arlova has found out. Kazan is a city with a long history, a mix of cultures and with thousands of new students arriving here every year. This year Kazan has been commended as one of the three best cities of Russia for young people. Nice ecology developed, networks of roads and public transport, historical heritage and contemporary urban environments. All this creates a comfortable space for young people to live, study and replenish strength. Kazan has a unique existence of cultures. Here, Eastern Orthodox Christians and Muslims congratulate each other on religious holidays. Apart from mosques and Orthodox churches standing next to each other, the city center also accommodates a synagogue, Catholic and Protestant churches. Mutual respect among people of various ethnicities and religions is a trademark of our city. When I choose Kazan, I was so surprised because, uh, you know, when I, when, I, when I search on internet the tourist place in Kazan and I, I watch uh, uh, in internet Kremlin and I was shocked that the uh, mosque Kul Sharif is just standing just nearby the Orthodox Christian Church. And earlier I was surprised, I thought that it is possible only in India because we believe in unity and diversity. So, yeah, it's, it helps me a lot. Kazan Kremlin, a part of UNESCO World Heritage List, is the heart of our city. However, Kazan with its diverse architecture, mixture of cultures, loyalty to national traditions, and there is an example of one of the brightest centers in Russia. This mixture, combined with Kazan's friendliness and hospitality, gives the city its well-deserved popularity. The newest building inside the Kazan Kremlin was is the Kul Sharif Mosque. It was under construction from 1996 till 2005 and is now one of the largest mosques in Europe. The building can admit a thousand people and its courtyard another 10,000. A similar mosque, one of the most impressive in the world, existed here before, but was in the 16th century. Kul Sharif Mosque is a newly built structure and here you can find eight towers. These towers are called like a minarets and each of the minarets are adopted by crescent oriented to Mecca. Not far from the mosque is the Annunciation Cathedral, the oldest surviving building in Kazan. Still the most popular landmark in the Kremlin is the Sumbika Tower. This tower is 58 meters tall. The exact construction date is unknown but supposed it to be early 18th century. The tower's top has an inclination of about 2 meters from the vertical axis and is also the skin of one 
one of the most popular local legends about the most famous queen of Tatars, whose name the tower now bears. In the 16th century, Ivan the Terrible, the Russian Tsar, uh, fell in love to Tatar Tsarina, soon became, and asked her to become her wife. And so Tatar Tsarina said no, she rejected this proposal, and Ivan the Terrible, the second time, came here to the Kazan Kremlin and um, asked very strictly, seriously, yeah, and then uh, the Tatar Tsarina couldn't do anything, and she said that she would be uh, a wife of Ivan the Terrible, but uh, Ivan the Terrible need to build the highest building in the city in seven days, and you know what? Uh, in seven days, the tower was ready. But uh, Tata Tsarina Suvike had no intention to marry Ivan the Terrible, and um, she decided to climb up to the top of the tower, jumped off, and died. So since this time, the tower bears her name. There are other places with ancient legends, such as Lake Caban, which according to a folk story story is a treasure on its bottom. We still don't know whether it's there or not, but a real and tangible treasure for Kazantias and their guests is the city's infrastructure. The lake has an embankment, three and a half kilometers long, where locals like to stroll in summer there embankment hosts festivals, street markets and other events. The city also has many parks and squares, theaters and museums all ready to welcome various youth events. Residential courtyards and parks offer many sports grounds for local viewers. That many tourists and sport events uh, that took place in our city made Kazan entirely prepared in this matter. Today, the restaurants and cafes of the city can sell their visitors, uh, their visitors in English. The entire sea infrastructure has translation into English, including public transport stops, metro maps, special street signs and ATC. What comes down to you, dear students, the city has created all the conditions for you not to be left alone and to be always supported. Even if there is a language barrier somewhere, there will always be people who will help you. Kazan was recently included in the top three Russian cities for young people after Moscow and St. Petersburg. Among their criteria are employment and career opportunities, high quality education in local universities, entertainment and uh, competitive salaries. Another important factors in the voting war folk-life balance and environmental quality. The city has many grocery stores, from local specialities including including Tatar cuisine to exotic offerings. Anyone who comes to Kazan can find something to their taste. Such a mix of cultures and faiths, new urban environments and historical monuments, opportunities for intelligent and active rest, offices of global companies with attractive workplaces. All this makes Kazan a city where everyone can find something of interest. And Kazan greets everyone with joy and hospitality as befitting its long history of the friendship of peoples. Sofia Arlova, Andrei Bogudinov, Kazan University. The admission season at Kazan Federal University is still in full motion. The first batch of exams for international applicants has already taken place. The exams were all online. University's official website and social media pages are always ready to provide information and contacts for further details if you need them. How does the university prepare to invite international students? Who helped them in applying and pursuing? We spoke about this with our head of international admission unit, Rauf Sabirov. Hello. Good afternoon, Anastasia. I'm so glad to see you. How is the admission campaign for foreign applicants going at Kazan University? Mm -hmm. Actually, the admission campaign for foreigners has started in KFU on the 1st of March. Mm -hmm. And uh, now is uh, the middle of the admission campaign. And now we see that a lot of uh, uh, foreign students want to study here in uh, Kazan Federal University. And uh, we here want to present uh, the opportunities they have and uh, 
the way how they can apply for studies. Mm -hmm. And what are the main specifics? Mm -hmm. So uh, this year we have changed the system of uh, application and uh, now uh, applicants need to register on uh, a new system, Budo Studentum, and uh, all uh, documents that they need to bring with themselves is uh, all what they need because uh, when they came last year to the office, they had to print the applications, they had to sign the applications. Mm -hmm. But this year we have adapted the simple uh, signing in the system and uh, now they need only to use their phone device in order to sign the applications and uh, they can do it uh, fully online. And how many students have already applied and which countries? Mm -hmm. So, according to the statistics we have, uh, about uh, 3,000 students have already applied and uh, most of them apply from the CIS countries like uh, Uzbekistan, uh, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan. But uh, we also have a lot of applicants from uh, countries that are not uh, close to Russia, mm -hmm. like uh, Iran, Turkey, China, uh, Egypt and others. And uh, if you look at the... Uh, data we have, ab about 40% uh, of all applicants are from uh, uh, visa countries. How is the application process arranged in general? So, uh, students uh, can apply uh, online or they can come to our office. Mm -hmm. If they want to come to our office, they can uh, come to Kremlovska 25. We have arranged uh, six uh, places with uh, university staff in order to accept the documents that they bring with them. These uh, employees can also help with the registration of the website and uh, when the process is finished they will explain what they need to do next and uh, what they need to do in order to prepare for the mm -hmm. entrance exams because uh, all admission is uh, based on the entrance exams here in the university. So that's the first way how they can apply. Uh, if uh, they are not here in Kazan, in Tatarstan, mm -hmm. they can apply online. They can uh, open our website, that is abiturian.kpfu.ru, and uh, register there by themselves. And um, they will also need to upload the documents that we require, that are the passport and the translation of passport in Russian language. That is a document of their education, educational certificate and the translation into uh, Russian. And they need also to down upload the photo. Mm -hmm. If they don't have the photo, they can use their mobile phone in order to make photo uh, right there during the application process. So these are two ways that we have in QFU in order mm -hmm. to apply. And what are the most common questions from foreign applications mm -hmm. and, of course, your answer to these questions? Mm -hmm. So, uh, we have lots of questions from foreigners and uh, every day when we come to our office and open the um, email, we see that we have received about uh, 400 uh, messages from foreigners. It's uh, for one night. And uh, we need to answer them quickly in order to give uh, the information like uh, directly to the students and uh, they need to, there's the information that they need to apply. And um, there are different questions and uh, regarding different processes here in KFU. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most common questions uh, definitely are about the admission process. So how they can apply, uh, what documents uh, they need and uh, what they need to do in order to be accepted to the university, in order to be enrolled, etc. So uh, we have just uh, discussed uh, several questions with you about the application process. Uh, I also want to speak uh, some more about the uh, entrance exams mm -hmm. because uh, it's also a very popular question about uh, foreigners. Okay, and what about accommodation for students? So, uh, this is actually the specific of uh, this year's admission as well. And um, unfortunately, KFU will not be able to give a dormitory for all students this year. And uh, that's why we need to uh, launch a kind of uh, um, system that will help us to choose students who need the dormitory the most. Mm -hmm. And uh, surely, if we'll see that uh, this student 
uh, is uh, uh, one of the students that needs a dormitory a lot, we will be able and we will do our best in order to give the place them. But uh, as uh, I told, uh, uh, the number of places in dormitory is limited and uh, you can't say that we will be able to give the dormitory for everyone. Okay, and how we can contact with you? So, uh, as I told you, you can uh, come to our office and get a face-to-face -face, uh, uh, consultation from our officers. But if you are not here in Kazan, you can definitely contact uh, with us via different uh, channels. Like uh, the first one and the most uh, uh, useful for uh, applicants is uh, uh, email. And that is admission at uh, kpfu.ru. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can also phone us uh, using the phone number plus seven eight four three two three three seven zero two seven. And we also have uh, WhatsApp and Telegram number. And uh, you can write us there. And uh, that is plus seven nine six zero zero four nine one eight seventy six. When students from other countries can come to study? So, uh, generally, they need to come by the 1st of September when their studies uh, begin. But uh, visa countries need to get invitation first mm -hmm. in order to come to Kazan. And uh, it's a quite long uh, uh, procedure because it takes about 45 days. And uh, that's why they need to pass exams as soon as they can, uh, pay the, for their tuition, uh, look at the, uh, at the enrollment statement on the website, and if they see their name, they need to write to the uh, visa office in order to uh, apply for an invitation. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, process of uh, preparing invitation will start and they will be able to come as soon as they get the invitation. Uh, it uh, always uh, uh, takes uh, more time than we expect. What foreign students need to do when they come to Kazan? So, uh, before their departure to Kazan, they need to inform the international office about their arrival. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the international office needs to prepare the documents um, before they are coming here, in order to make uh, more comfort their departure and arrival. And uh, when they come to Kazan, they will need to uh, come to the university village first by themselves. They can take taxi or they can use a bus from the mm -hmm. airport. And um, there they will receive uh, the following instructions what they need to do. If uh, they will get a dormitory, uh, they will give the instru instructions what they need to do in order to get a dormitory, to pass a medical like uh, assessment, and uh, etc. And if they will live in a flat or somewhere outside the dormitory, they will also get the instructions what they need to do in order to uh, be legal here in Kazan. Okay, mm -hmm. I understand. Thank you. I think this meeting was so important for our foreign applications. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the chance to give some more information about the foreign admission and about uh, the process uh, that we have here in KFU. What do international students do for their extracurricular activities? What are their hobbies? What are the opportunities provided by research and student communities? Members of our student club know everything about this. The club unites students of Kazan Federal University. It provides conditions for recreation, arts and self-actualization of young people. Currently, the university has over 90 art collectives in sports, theater and many other spheres. Of course, international students are active participants. Moreover, there are some special offers to help them adapt to their new life quicker. Some of them were covered in our previous episode. Now it is time for some more. I'm a matter. A traditional Latin name is saying to Kazan Federal University by those who choose it to study, grow as person, find friends and new interests. The university gives young people not only knowledge but also new skills for various nature. Uh, Kazan Federal University is a place where every student can realize their potential. 
The student club uh, unites more than 7,000 university students. Here students can show their talents in several areas. Musician, dance, theatrical, original genre and journalism. Overall, Kazan University has 104 student collectives, modern and traditional dance, tours, bands, classical theater, comedy and much more. Everything for a creative person to really implement their talents. Anel came from Nigeria to study law this year and she took her favorite musical instrument with her. My instrument is the saxophone. I actually didn't start with the saxophone, I started with the keyboard. Um, that gave me a general knowledge of music. Then I started to learn the violin, but I didn't, I didn't continue with that because it was very hard. So I picked up the saxophone and it was much easier for me to learn, so I stuck with it. It's been two years now. Anel plays her saxophone at many university events. One of her recent performances was a student spring, a traditional annual festival. Anel says that she grew fond of jazz after arriving to Russia. After all, this genre is especially befitting the saxophone. However, she can also play other things if need be. Another very large representation is athletes. The university has about 2,000 fans of athletics. They play for their departments and their university as a well. Among the popular sports are football, volleyball, basketball, hockey and cyber sports. There are many in-house and inter-university competitions for students. And if we are talking about Kafu, many people have chosen it for its extra curricular activities as much as studies. I was new that Kazan University is a place where you can find students from all over the world. I was interested in this atmosphere and decided to enroll. I also like volleyball. I actually had this um, interest in football and I actually played football, street football in my area. So as I came to Russia and I saw that there is an opportunity to fostered that um, interest. I actually enrolled in the sports club and here I am enjoying myself doing what I love. There are many activists who prefer social work to sports or art. There is a vast field of action for them in volunteering. Every activist develops their leadership skills and teamwork. Each one of our employers has at some point been a student leader and organizer. Almost all our provincial organizations and many companies have our alumni who acquired their social skills during student years. Apart from extracurricular activities, there are over a hundred science clubs. Here, our young schoolers can hone their knowledge in their chosen area and deepen their understanding of subjects. Okay, so this is known as cardiopulmonary resuscitation. This is an emergency procedure in case of stopping of either the heart or there is no respiration in the patient. Every department has specialized science clubs where students can share their findings and invite educators to uh, discuss topics of interest. Their club's contacts can be found at a dean's office of every institute and department. For example, in autumn, in fall, the students, the local foreigners, they have a special event which is called the Atkravai Mirnovik in Russian. It's opening the science, the world of science, all the students participating in that event. So they're coming and seeing, looking and participating in these places. They're getting their contacts, they're knowing each other, so they can continue later on after getting some details, they can participate in these actions. Universal personal growth. This is what distinguishes a generic place of study from a real alma mater. And this growth is what Kazan University provides for each and every one of its students. Sofia Arlova, Hafiz Garayev, Nikita Akinshin, Kazan University. You can now see historical Japanese photos at Kazan University. A unique expo is available at the Labachevsky Museum. The collection comprises items from the Multimedia Art Museum of Moscow and Ethnographic Museum of Kazan Federal University. 
They are copies of photos made during the Meiji period, late 19th to early 20th century. The pictures depict rural and urban landscapes, gardens, parks. They show how samurais, merchants, peasants and other people looked. Guests are also treated to some tokens of Japanese culture, such as crown of personal seals. The exhibition opens a cycle of museum project at Kazan University dedicated to the world of travel. Now, some more news in our digest. Graduates of IT majors of Kazan Federal University are among the top 10 most highly paid in the industry. Their average monthly income in 150,000 rubles. The method of calculation goes like this. There is an employee's graduation speciality, and then an employer gives their salary offer. And thus we know which graduate receives which remuneration. We are thankful for being a part of this ranking. Students of Kazan Federal University received an internship from the mayor's office of Kazan. They pitched their project to Mayor Ilsur Mechen. Loving the people, that's the main quality for anyone who seeks to enter public service. Kazan University joined the Thai BO 2022 International Forum in Minsk, Belarus. The participants presented their project in information technology. We showed a software tool for digital medicine. This is a device to monitor the staff's life and safety, a software tool to optimize workplace performance, and a number of other projects in the biomedical sphere. A master student of Kazan University works on a special device to determine risks of the emergence of allergic reactions based on the types of pollen in the air. The device can be produced in a 3D printer. The device observes everything that is in the air. The contests are then attached to a special ribbon, and then we can determine the types of pollen caught on it. Kazan Federal University is always waiting for you. It is one of the oldest universities in Russia with excellent research infrastructure, storied scholarly teams and comfortable environment for studies and living. Our admission campaign is open. Please follow our website and news episodes. See you soon, be safe and have a great time.